Hi, welcome to the Java um, programming tutorial um, for basic programming. And um, what we're going to do is teach um, Java programming. Um, Java is object oriented programming and it's split up on, into all different parts. It's not like um, procedural um, ramage programming where you go from one line of code to the next and you continue all the way down to the bottom of a page and then again you look back again. No, what it is, is is that you have one piece of code to do one thing and you can call that piece of code anytime you want and it's actually in a different file and you can have many copies of that run at the same time so it's it's much easier to navigate and um, to write code and so what what you keep these codes in is, is called a class class and each class has like members and there's two different kinds of members there's like variables which is like data members fields and there's methods and methods do things so you'll have data members um, fields and um, variables they're called all different things depends um, on your pre preference and they will process these fields they'll add things to it they'll take things away from it they'll they'll turn it into sentences, they'll strip it down to characters and all these sorts of things. So that's the do things, it's the methods and the, the fields, the data members, they hold data, like right? they'll hold a number, they'll hold a, st a fraction, they'll hold a string, they'll hold a whole sentence. And so that's a class there, a class is a file, it's first class dot Jaffa. And the uh, second class, second class dot Java, third class um, dot Java, three separate files, and that's a basic class. It's the class keyword, and you give it a name. You can call it whatever you want, but all, a class always starts with a capital letter. And public is an access modifier. You get different ones like private and public. Public means anyone can access this from outside the class. Private means the members can only be accessed from within the class element of security and so the first thing I'm going to do is, is try to run this class with nothing inside it no nothing inside here as well and so if I run the program application ok Select, selection does not contain a main type now the reason for that is every Java program needs a static main method to run the whole program but you only have one and that's why it's static and you can put it in whatever class you want as long as one of them's got it and it starts off with public static void we'll explain all these keywords and what they mean and what they're for and then main and two brackets and because it's because it's a method and it's going to have you're going to have not just one line of code in it you're going to have many lines of code you've got to have a way to to group that code together and we use we use braces for it and it's already put the second one in and so, so you've got the start place and the end place and anything between here is code which is going to be done one at a time first one, first one comes first and it finishes it and the last one and so inside the main what we do is a string, we're passing a string and square brackets and args this can be, you can name this whatever you want but this is standard way of doing it and this is so you could pass an argument into main if you wanted to and so if we run the program now with the main method no no errors but there's no code we didn't put any code into it and we're going to do hello world so this is all going to be explained system dot out dot print ln brackets hello 
world it's built wrong no P in world so semicolon if we run a program it's going to print this is the method for printing something to screen this is a this is a path and the different classes and the method is println and so it's all going to be explained and inside that this just like an argument is passed a string and the string has double quotation marks and so if we just run this and you can see it's printed here hello world and so that's how you do hello world and you need to have a main and what I'm going to explain in the first one is separators now we've already looked at these separators the brackets the brackets hold arguments we've looked at the braces this brace is connected to that brace and these two braces is inside the code of these two braces so the braces hold code together but so does so does the, the brackets the brackets hold codes together again that's one the square brackets this is for syntax, separate is for syntax. This, this, a, a semicolon. There's a comma. I forget the comma, yeah. There's a full stop. And there's a colon. No, for syntax, these are all the separators. Um, what, what, you use it, the, the, the braces for grouping code to different methods. So everything between the start and stop brace is code that's going to be executed in a group all at one time. Inside the braces, you'll find this in methods. Right. So we'll call the method method. And after the method, you've got braces. You've got brackets, sorry, brackets. And inside, if it's empty, it means you don't pass anything to this method but if you put an argument in and you can call it whatever you want arg then you're passing an argument into this method and within the braces code within the braces the, the code the argument will be passed to the code to be processed in this method and then it can be stored in a field, um, a, a data member, or you can have a return value, and it will return it back to the main program. So, and then that so that's the braces. It's braces are for methods grouping arguments together. You can have more than one argument. Then you have index square brackets. This is for index. Like one, two. 3, 4, 5, 45 and 55 right. each one of these is a different element and it's used for arrays arrays are, are like for a group of like data members all together rather than accessing them one at a time separately you can have them all indexed together, grouped together and so you can index them by zero would be the first one and two, one, two, three, four, until the end, and so they all index together, and so these these square brackets for is for indexing, and it's used for arrays, and so that's for separating the code as well, and each each element separated by a comma, commas used for separating things. So if I've got two arguments, arg one, I put a comma to separate it arg2 arg3 and so the commas used to separate separate commands um, separate values and use it for separating if you didn't have a separator there then the compiler wouldn't know um, that these were all different commands it would look at them all as the same command and because it was a white space um, it would think it was a new line and it would create a problem with the compiler so you use the comma for separator. That's the syntax. Semicolon is used here. This whole line is one command. And 
though that's the end of the command to compiler in Java does not know it's the end of the command until you you, you give it a message to say hey we've stopped this command we're going to start a new one and that's what this is for this is saying oh we've stopped the command we don't need that at the end of the braces because it knows that's the end of the that block of code and the full stop the full stop is used for um, like we've used it here system starts with a capital S what it's telling you is this is a class a class called system and dot out is a method within because it's a row letter it's a method within it and within that there's another method called print which takes an argument and so it's more for addressing accessing class members of um, members of classes and so what we're going to do is we're going to stop there for the next tutorial and so that's the first hello world and we're going to explain everything and so so again thank you for your time